ChatGPT is more than just a language model. It can be used to create websites, businesses, and much, much more. And I would know because I created, built, and sold a business on OpenAI's platform just this year. So in this video, I'm going to explain how you can do the same using ChatGPT and its models. I've structured this video in three different parts. The first part of this video will cover the real world example of the business I created and then sold. The second part of this video will cover how to use ChatGPT and its tools and models to actually build websites, applications, and businesses. And the third and final part will be the technical aspect, which is what this actually looks like behind the scenes, what you have to do in terms of writing the actual code and how to implement it into your own application or website. If at any point you feel stuck or you want more information, I also have three useful videos that'll help you. The very first is an introduction to what ChatGPT is and how it works. The second is a crash course on using ChatGPT, essentially doing the prompts and getting the outputs that you would like. And the third and final one is the behind the scenes look at the business I created called Enhance UI. All of these videos should have popped up as tooltips up here. Otherwise, they'll also be in the link in the description below. So let's start off with the first part of this video, how ChatGPT is more than just a model for chatting to an AI and how it can be used to solve problems as well as create business opportunities. They've only recently opened up ChatGPT to be available and free for anyone to use, which means you can try it out right now at the link in the description below. But on top of that, they've also also made the OpenAI models available for anyone to build out any ideas, whether it's for your own business or even just an idea or a hobby you have. So while OpenAI had this restricted behind a private beta, I was lucky enough to get access to that private beta. These models weren't as refined as ChatGPT is today. You had to play around with lots of parameters to get the outputs you wanted, and there was no nice interface to be able to chat along with it. You can still access that playground. I'll link it in the description below, where you get to play around with a bit of a sandbox of ChatGPT and its models, and you can also figure out exactly how you might consider building your own business or ideas. So moving back to this idea that I built up, it was to solve my own problems back then. These problems were to do with development and coding because I was making a lot of mistakes and I wanted to see if this AI model could basically help me solve them. And so I trained GPT to do this quite effectively. I built a front end and a back end around this website and I called it Enhance AI. It was essentially just like ChatGPT, just dumbed down a little bit so that any developer could get answers to very specific questions that they were asking. Questions included explaining a piece of code, very similar to what ChatGPT does now, as well as converting a piece of code from say JavaScript to Python and many, many more examples. While this kind of worked, the original models from OpenAI, which were called DaVinci at the time, weren't that great at coding. It wasn't until Codex was released, this model, which is specifically designed for GitHub Copilot, that we started to see the coding opportunities from OpenAI. Unfortunately, the release of GitHub Copilot also made my OpenAI model a little bit redundant. So I pivoted and focused more on content writing as well as blogs and blog outlines. I created a content editor that was using OpenAI's models, and this actually was quite successful. I created a number of really cool features here, things like fixing grammar, lengthening sentences, and even a micro predict feature, which would essentially write out a paragraph for you, similar to what you have in Gmail, but in an entire paragraph rather than just a word or two. So I decided to take this business to market. I listed it on a website called MicroAcquire. This is a website where you can list businesses for sale, even business ideas, and I was able to sell it to a third-party blogging organization. I went on to sell this for about $30,000, and this should give you an idea of how ChatGPT OpenAI and its models can be used to start any type of business in any type of industry. With that said, let's move on to the second part of this video. In this part, I want to explain exactly how you yourself can start building and utilizing the OpenAI models, as well as ChatGPT itself in your day-to-day -day life, as well as to build your own startup, business idea, or much, much more. I'll do this in two parts. The first, we'll have a look at ChatGPT itself to see exactly how you can use it in business and in work and even just in your personal life. The second part will be having a look at the more advanced models that ChatGPT is based on. Traditionally, you would use ChatGPT to ask questions. Questions like how to build a website. Unfortunately, questions like this don't provide the best results simply because it will only give you a text-based response. If you wanna be smarter around your prompts, you'll be able to get much more information. 
The very first part of this is actually putting in specific code that you might want to have solved and then prompting ChatGPT to solve it for you. So as an example of that, instead of saying how to build a website, we could say build a website starter template for a page called index.html. For this example, instead of just getting a text-based reply on how to build a website, we'll actually get the code involved in build. It'll look something like this, and you'll be able to simply copy paste the code straight in. This of course applies to any problem you might have. You can ask ChatGPT to essentially write any type of code, whether it's a JavaScript function to complete an event where it tracks your mouse or some Python code to do some algebra. Of course, not all businesses are developer related. There are certain businesses that might be say in recruitment and it might involve, for example, scanning through lots of resumes. ChatGPT can be used to scan through a resume and then identify key criteria such as skills or job experience and then pull those individuals out to mark them for review. A feature like this could save countless hours to a recruiter who, for example, might have to scan through thousands of resumes every single day. And this is just the beginning of the kind of practical use cases that ChatGPT might have on business. I'm going to show some practical examples so that you guys can use this to apply it in your own industries. Here, I'm going to get ChatGPT to write a cover letter for a developer with skills in Angular. Of course, this is a bit of joke. We're actually looking for a React.js candidate and with that, we're going to ask OpenAI's system here to check whether or not this person has React.js experience. We're going to only ask for a yes or no reply. Predefined prompts like this, where you can copy paste a resume in and then ask ChatGPT to answer for you a yes or no reply will essentially make the job of the recruiter much easier. And this is where we'll now start to take a step outside of just ChatGPT and have a look at OpenAI's other models as well as its playground to really test the boundaries of what's possible in terms of doing things just like this. What you'll need to do is head over to the original OpenAI website by simply removing the chat part of the domain and just going to openai.com. Head over to APIs and then select to login. If you've created a login with ChatGPT, then you should be able to log in to this interface just fine. Once you've logged in, you'll be taken to this dashboard here, which normally you could go to OpenAI's ChatGPT3, but in this example, we're gonna head over to the quick start tutorials as well as the examples. I'm gonna head over to examples here and we're gonna get quite a few different types here. I'm not gonna cover all of these models, but it is a good idea to actually test these out yourselves because there are quite a few interesting things that ChatGPT's models can do here. Things like convert movies to emojis or classify text. There's quite a few different examples here, but let's actually have a look at a simple one. I'm gonna start off with this summarization for a second grader, and this will open up in the playground environment. This playground, you'll notice, is all text-based, but the difference here in terms of ChatGPT as well as this playground is the fact that it is all in one big text box. You ask your question here and ChatGPT3, or at least TextDaVinci003, will give you a response. I've clicked submit so that you guys can have a look and it comes out with the summary here for Jupyter. Now, what's interesting to note is the different models we have available to us here. This is not technically ChatGPT. This is DaVinci 003. It has different responses. So does Curie and some of the other examples, like even Crushman, which is sort of like the codex model that GitHub Copilot is based on. Now, using these, we can even customize them further with things like the temperature here, which is technically a statistic of randomness, where a temperature of zero give us no randomness, whereas a statistic of one will give us lots and lots of randomness in the answers. These are all predefined in ChatGPT, but these are all customizable inside of the playground. And this is why this is the best place to start building a website or a business or an application idea because you'll have full control to test out the environment. And this is the segue to the next part of this video where once you get a better idea of how to use the playground and getting prompts and outputs that you want, you can start creating an API layer to interact with the open AI platform directly and build a SaaS on top of it. I want to showcase one more example before we move on. Let's head over to examples and go to chat. 
This is going to give you an idea of, for example, how the OpenAI platform originally conceptualized OpenAI's ChatGPT3. Here you have some general settings for the conversation, which is that it is between a human and an AI assistant. We have a few rules as well for it to be helpful, creative, clever and friendly. And this is where the conversation begins. We can say, what is your name? And here the AI will give us a response. As you can see, this is fundamentally what ChatGPT looks like. But here is where you can create your own type of interface with your own type of rules and allow you to build a business with your own type of chat as well. Now, hopefully this gave you a good idea of all of these things that are happening in the background, but how do we interact with this? How would we build a front end website to integrate an API to start talking to these models? This is the third part of this video, and this part will be quite technical. We're going to take a look at the code that's happening in the background, the requests and the responses that we can perform as part of the OpenAI model for its API. There's a lot of documentation you guys can have a look at, which I'll link in the description below. But this will be using the JavaScript interface. I'm going to be writing some code in VS Studio, and we're going to be using VS Studio code to essentially engage with the OpenAI platform. Now, if this part doesn't interest you, you can hit the like and subscribe button. But if you want to learn what's happening behind the scenes, now we get to take a look. To start off with, it's quite useful to head over to the documentation and scroll down a little bit to the completions part of the API. We have a few examples here of doing a completion using the GPT-3 models, but these are basically if you're doing a HTTP request. We're going to be using Node.js in this example. We're going to be downloading the OpenAI module, and we're going to be using it to create requests directly through to OpenAI's platform. Then we can use these requests and structure them in any way we want. Let's take a look at how this works. I've downloaded and installed Node.js, and I've also downloaded and installed VS Studio Code. Here, I've created a new folder called ChatGPT, and I'm going to create a file called index.js. I'm also going to install the OpenAI platform by running npm install OpenAI. Here, we're going to be able to use this module to start interacting with OpenAI. I also have a package.json here, and as part of that package.json, I'm going to add in a type and here we're going to do module. This is just so that instead of doing requires, we can do imports. Heading back to the OpenAI platform here, we can now go to the documentation and simply copy paste the code we have here for creating a completion. We'll head back into VS Code and we're going to paste this into our index file. We only need to do one other thing here, which is to implement the API key. To do that, we're going to head back to the website. We're going to head over to view API keys here under your dashboard, and we're going to get a copy of your secret key. Now I have one over here. I'm going to create a brand new one for testing here, and I'll delete this after this video. So don't try and copy this, but for your own key, just make sure that you keep it private and do not show it publicly anywhere because it will be using the credit that you have from your account. Now let's head back to VS Code and let's plug this bad boy in. I'm going to apply it here where we normally should do it as a process environment key. But for this test, this should be enough. Finally, I'm going to update this statement here to be an import instead of a require. And that's about it. We can now test this out by calling node and calling index.js. Here, we're going to get a response back from the server, but we're not console logging it out. So I'm going to console log and we're going to log out the response here. And we're also going to call out the data that we get. This should show up now in the terminal and here we get the response. So it says, this is a test and the response is, this is indeed a test, which means that it was successful. We do get some other information here, like the ID and the object, as well as the model when it was created and a couple of others. But this is a quick and basic example of how you can interact with the API. These are the essential building blocks of how you would build a business using OpenAI and its models. If, for example, you have some interesting ideas, you can use this and wrap it around a shell and then serve it to customers. In this regard, the sky's the limit. It's up to your own imaginations as to how you want to utilize OpenAI's models. But hopefully this gives you enough information to go by. If you want more advanced examples of all of this, let me know in the comments below and I can do a follow up video of exactly how this is possible too. 
Otherwise, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.